We are back. Welcome to the maybe eighth episode of the show, but here's the deal. Let me just kind of set this up. So we canceled the show a while back. Um, Doug and George kind of bailed on me, kind of left me in the wind. So I did, I did one alone in my office. I think I text that to you guys, but it, it didn't go anywhere. So it didn't take off. But not surprising. Not surprising at all. So I drafted some contracts. The president came to me and she said, we need four more episodes of the show. we got to have it. So I mapped out some contracts. I met with George and Doug. They were reluctant. Uh, Doug had some side notes. Yes. There's some yeah. pieces we can't disclose That's about. exactly right. Yeah, in yeah. the contract. It's uh, confidential. But we are back for four more episodes. And our first episode is extremely special. Wow, wow. Yeah. We're, we're, just, we're just going for yeah. it right out of the gate. Yeah. Don't expect the, the ones after this. No, no, be, no. That, this is... This is not a good deal to set the expectations. So Maybe I should have done one of the deal. best yeah. of the yeah. next four. I'm, I'm willing to renegotiate. It will. All right. I'm going to bring in our, our guest right now. Have a seat wow. right here, sir. Hey. Yes, yes, yes. Hey. How you doing, man? <laughs> Nick, good to see you. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you were in my class. That's true. <laughs> All the way from Arizona, and he is flying out Sunday night? Sunday night to report on Monday wow. to the Philadelphia Eagles. Yep. Wow. So he's got a bit. I, I'm going to start with the first comment, and then you guys can fire away. I want to go on record on the show right now. I think you're a better pastor than you are a linebacker. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You were so <laughs> good this I mean, Sign me up for the sermons. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get me on the list. So <laughs> important for our students and my athletes to hear you do that. That was fantastic. Yeah. Really, really good. We'll get we'll get funny and not serious in a minute, but that was seriously really good. Well, I was my first question was going to be when I one of the things I'm most impressed about you. Mm -hmm. Hey, by the way, you're top 14 in the league in tackles for loss. I want to ask you about right, that, yeah. but before I go there, mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you how did you get so good with the press? I mean, I watch a lot of people, oh, the press, <laughs> but you're like, you're natural. Yeah. You answer questions. I got, I got a kind of a hint of it when I saw you this morning. <laughs> but tell me, have you had to practice? Because working uh, with the press is a little different than just public yeah. speaking. Um, I, don't, I don't know, man. I think what I try to do is just be myself, yeah. first off. Yeah. Just try to relax, breathe through it, not make it bigger than it is anything else. I treat them as my friends. Like yeah. I was just talking to a, a coach or yeah. a friend or whatever. So I just try to take that pre that stress off myself. Yeah. And then they, sometimes they'll hardball you and ask you to like, yeah. kind of talk about yeah. you know, what, what this teammate did or whatever. That's what we'll yeah. do in here. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> this is hardball. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know. <laughs> this is fine. But what I try to do is when they do that, revert yeah. back to myself. And sport. So it's just like, hey, this, this what happened to this run? It's like, oh, you know what? I got to fit it better. We all got to do it together. So it's yeah. just because we're in together, right? We're judged collectively because we're judged individually. We're on a team. So if I throw you under the bus, basically I'm throwing all of us under the bus. Right. And so I just kind of try to go with that myself. You, you're very good at it. I appreciate and it. you ought to start uh, kind of a consulting company yeah. on well, how so, to do that. I see, I'm it's good. I can help anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where you make the money after. The consulting yeah, right. is where it's at. So yeah. I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, you do right. that on the that's side right. when you're a pastor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to hear. Uh, I want to hear the story again that you told about the first time you thought you just told it downstairs. So I'm sorry, but you thought, oh, I can start to think about the league. That, yeah, right. that when that entered yeah. your brain, yeah. Yeah. that was a really cool story. I'd like to All hear right, that. So it's a little bit of a long one, but it started my freshman year. We were playing Crown at Crown, and I was playing on the ball, and I was a little bit light, so they didn't move me. But I was like, I was like 179. When so you say playing on the ball, is that meaning so like the line of scrimmage. So okay. like I'm right uh, up. You're, you're up on a line, right defensive the, line. Deep. Yeah, right in front of the tackle. Okay. Yeah, no start. Like, no well, start. No, no tackle, start. so I'm going to ask like an edge, like okay. a yeah. stand-up outside line. We might have a lot of football questions. Well, like a yeah. so we'll have to or, uh, <laughs> yeah. like a Lawrence Taylor. You know? I'm not yeah, saying actually, I'm them, but yeah, those are the positions, right? Yeah. And so I'm standing there, and you know I'm not that big, so oftentimes I was getting knocked out of the gap. And we were playing crown, and they were running they were running towards the side that I was usually being, but I wasn't in the game. And I'm sitting on the sideline behind the defensive line coach and the defensive coordinator. And all I hear is the line coach say, Marlo's got to stay in this gap. And he says it to the defensive coordinator. So then the defensive coordinator, when we get to the huddle, yeah. says, hey, Nick, you're out. Like, you're finished. And I was like, man. Wow. But he didn't. So he didn't. But the defense coordinator didn't know I wasn't on the field. 
at the time. Like, I wasn't even on the field. So uh, he came back to me and apologized. He thought you were on the field. He didn't hear what he said. It wasn't even me. So I was like, okay, here we go. So he came and apologized to me. That, like, right after that week, he ended up moving me to a different position. That's kind of where my career took off. And so the next year, we played Crown again. And I'm like, all right. I, I got something to prove, not just to them, but to my coaches. And so we get in the game, and they're playing a little bit of dirty. Like, they'll hit me after the whistle. I'm on the pile. They'll come and hit me in the back. They'll grab me, grab me by the face mask. Grab me by the, like, they would just do all types of stuff. And the white hat, I'm, I'm convinced. I don't know who he is. That's the head official. Yeah, the head, the head, 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 head. Yeah, I learned that. Yeah. So I'm convinced, I'm convinced that that particular guy did not like me. Because he threw a couple unsportsmanlike. Right. Like they, they are bad people. Officials yeah. come out of the <laughs> on game day like yeah. a pimple. Yeah. And they go back down to the inner. That's, that, that's how I felt. I was like, this particular one. Because exactly. yeah. there's yeah. multiple times in my career. Actually, I think yeah. he might have thrown me out my last game. Yeah. My, my senior. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. I got thrown out wow. the last game of my senior year. But, um, we'll learn that one later. Okay. So he, so he, uh, he was, he guy would hit me after the whistle. And I looked to the ref like, you know, throw a flag. He said, good hit. So I went to the other guy, the umpire. So at the time, this is before they moved to be behind the offensive line. The umpire stood right behind the D line. Yeah. So I went to him because those the guys who like, throw the flags for like holding stuff. Yeah. I said, "Hey, you see what I'm doing?" He said, "Just keep a cool head, cool head for bills." Right. Like, no, 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 no. Like this is this illegal. Like throw the flag. Right. Like, that's what you should do. Not tell me to, to keep a cool head. I don't. I don't need advice out here. So, <laughs> so I got these guys yelling at me on the sideline. I don't need you doing it. Also, so I'm like, all right, man. I gotta do something. So. It's it's a tight game. It's like the fourth quarter. Um, their quarterback actually got hurt. He broke his arm. It was nasty. The quarterback got hurt, and they were running the ball primarily, and it was within the possession. So we needed to make a play, and I, I slipped the block of the tight end, and I punched the ball out from the running back, picked it up, and scored. Yeah. Game game was over. We sealed the game. I go back on the field, and I jog on. The umpire comes up to me and says, see, I told you, cool hand prevails. Do what you got to do to get to the league. And then from there, that's kind he of He said hard. get to the league. That's what he said. And, wow. and from there so on, he planted that seed in your head. Yeah, exactly. And from there on, every time I played, like every time he officiated a game, he would come up to me. Every time. Interesting. I don't remember his name. I, I know his say, face. Did you find his name? name. Shoemaker knows it. Shoemaker oh, you gotta, you gotta track that down and send yeah, him some I, like a I know jersey his face. or something. I know his face. The I'm power sure. of, of planting a seed like yeah. that, a teacher, yeah. a coach, even an official. Yeah, that's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. That's a great story. Yeah, so. you you planted some seeds this morning in chapel. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Absolutely. So you said you were light when you came to Greenville. You weighed. You were one seventy five eleven. Yeah, yeah. one seventy five ten. And, and, and you are currently what? Uh, six feet six one. If you depending on what shoe I have on. Two twenty five. Where would you Where'd you play in high school? The position? Yeah. <laughs> offensive line. I was called offensive line. Are you serious? At 179 pounds. Yeah. Sitting behind the guy who was a lineman. Lineman. He's, he's dead now. Um, he had an accident, but he was uh, all American. He was number one guard in the nation at Grand Hill. And I sat behind him and I had to block him. Block him. For wow. two years. And it was just me, him going up and down. One day I went to the coach and I was like, I don't want to play the line anymore. Like, I'm just, my size, I'm not big enough to block anybody. Like, I don't know why I'm doing this. And he was like, I don't know. But they had, we had some guys that could really play. And they thought we'd be able to play on the next level. Uh, a couple of them did, but not many of them. When I say a couple, I mean maybe one or two. And they played for like a year or two. And I was working out during the offseason going to my senior year. And my mindset is, I don't I don't have JV anymore. You yeah. can't play JV. So I'm like, I'm not playing a line. I'm not going to get in. I got in a little bit, but I'm not really going to play. So if they're willing to move me, I'm moving. And Coach Woods. Was the, he wasn't even a coach at the time for the team. He was a coach the year before. He ended up going to a different school, but he was he came to like support us or whatever. He came to me and said, hey, Nick, when you are outside playing with your boy, what do you do? I said, I play receiver. I said, I don't know. He said, you don't play all line? I said, no, I play receiver, and I play DB. He said, all right. And then he came, the next day, the head coach comes to me and said, hey, you want to move tight end? So he moved me tight end, mm -hmm. then they moved me to outside linebacker. That's another, that's another story. Moving outside linebacker, and that's kind of why I ended up coming here playing outside linebacker. That's a fascinating story. Yeah. So you really didn't play a lot of football until your no, senior year. No, I, I, varsity, I started like seven games in high school. On varsity. Unbelievable. Yeah. Did you come here as a tight end? Were you recruited to come here? I, or that's another, did I, you solidify the outside no, linebacker? I, so when I came here, really my, my first thought was I'm going to play receiver. Um, okay. Because yeah, I, play I, yeah. I play tight end. Yeah. And, and, uh, high school and a defensive coordinator 
but but Bell wanted me to play defense. Yeah. And so we had got a new defense coordinator in between the time of me committing and showing up on training. Gotcha. Time. Okay. Because Ordell there walking. Yeah. And I show up and, and Coach Bell's like, hey, I want you, I want to introduce you to a guy. <laughs> I walk into the building. I meet Coach Lonnie and he goes, you know, Coach Bell goes, hey, this is Nicholas Mall. I was telling you about dad's a pastor, good athlete, you know, whatever. And he goes, and says, this is the kid that ran the five yard out. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was, which basically saying like he thinks he's gonna play receiver, and so he, he put me an outside linebacker, um, and that's when I was playing on the ball against Crown. And after that game, he apologized to me. They moved me to like a safety nickel yeah. position, yeah. and that's that's obviously what I ended up playing for the rest yeah. of my career here. So, and yeah. then another position change when you go to the NFL. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a fascinating story, yeah. actually. It is, and I think. I kind of said it a little bit down there. It's like faithful of a few, man. No matter what the yeah. assignment is, if you're yeah. diligent yeah. and you're intentional about your work, when you get a new assignment, it's not like yeah. new to you. You know what yeah. I mean? You put, you put the work in, you understand where you were before, and so now when you get this new assignment, you can be diligent in that and use the experience you had in the past. Yeah. But I think a lot of times what, what happens is you, know, you get an assignment, you don't want it, you yeah. don't like it, and yeah. you don't push your work in. Yeah. So then you, you just got to talk to my team <laughs> every day. Yeah. Yeah, we just <laughs> Can you just zoom, zoom in? in? Just zoom in right we'll just record some things keep playing. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. So yeah. I, think that's, I think that's big, man. I think and that's kind of yeah. what helped me change positions and be versatile in the league because, you know, there's some – so like 2020, when I was in the league, I played – uh, with the Raiders, I played Sam, Mike, Will, yeah. uh, on the ball, off yeah. the ball. Played, yeah. I did so much. You know, I think it helped me with just uh, experience yeah. in college. Now you've been really successful, though, on tackles for yeah. loss, which is a big deal in yeah. the NFL. Because yeah. everything's about making a big play. Yeah, it is. Right? It is. So tell me about that. Why is that something that – are you able to just make a quicker read – um, um, I mean, I love to sit here and say it's all you, but yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to, sometimes it's D-line, right? Yeah. So when you're a D-line, you do a good job of, of holding the point. When you say yeah. hold the point, you're holding the double yeah. team. Sure. It keeps them from climbing up to the linebackers. Right. So now I have, I have free reign to run it and, and make a tackle, yeah. right? So that kind of helps. Maybe it's a blitz. Yeah. Like if they send the right blitz and they're finding the right yeah. blitz angle. Yeah. Um, for me, it's, it's speed. Yeah. In anticipation. Sure. Anticipation. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so like, yeah. I'm I'm really anticipating certain yeah. plays. Like when I when I when I sit down and watch film. Yeah. And you look at my iPad. Um, How much film do you watch? Just real quickly. For for um, a, a, any given at, Sunday. At a minimum, I'm two I'm two hours a, a day. Oh, a yeah. day. Yeah. A day. So sure. you know Tuesday. To anticipate. Tuesday I'm coming in. I'm, I'm watching before practice. And this I mean, every schedule, every team I've been on the schedule, or a head coach I've had, the schedule's been different. But if I can, I'll come in the facility and watch an hour. And then watch an hour at night. How many um, guys are in there with you? Most guys are in there. I mean, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you, you, might, would, you might outshine yeah. some of them, being not, in there a little bit more, yeah, right? I would say it's a good bit. I would say probably four or five. And it's usually the vets. Right. You know what I mean? I've been on a lot of young teams. Yeah. Though. You know what I mean? I, so when I was with the Raiders, it was a young team. Yeah. And the Bears last year was a pretty so young So it's team. you, a young guy with vets watching yeah, film. when I was younger. Yeah, so my rookie year, I would get in there. Now, my rookie year, I, I did a lot more. But, you know, as I've gotten older, I'm able to kind of pinpoint what I want to watch. Yeah. You know, some guys kind of just turn it on, which that helps too. I'm not saying that there's no bad way. I know some guys, they just turn it on, you know, do whatever, and they'll come yeah. and look at it. And that helps too because some dudes just don't have their attention span. Right. For me, my attention span is, okay, I'm going to log yeah. in for this hour. I'm going to write my nose, take it, yeah. and I'm going to come back and watch it again. Yeah. I'm going to watch it while we're in, or in the meetings. I'm going to ask my questions. And then when I go home, I'm going to watch it again. And then, you know, towards towards the end of the week, it'll kind of taper down a little bit. So, like, yeah. on Fridays, I mean, I'll watch, I'll watch it in the morning for about two hours. And then at night, I may watch for 30 minutes just because I don't want to watch too much. And on Saturdays, I watch what I want to watch. Like, what are the plays that I want to make? When they run this counter, I know yeah. I can come in here. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever it is. So, that's that's kind of how I tailor it. I'm going to ask your parents later if you were like that in junior high and high school. <laughs> yeah, say the learn Yeah. When did that kick in? Because I mean, I'm still did. waiting for that to yeah. happen for me. It's coming yeah. out. <laughs> you know, uh, when did it come in? I, probably here. Um, yeah, that was. You, it was interesting yeah. to talk to you about oh, yeah. when you were talking about tailoring your schedule and figuring out the academics. Like, oh, it's know, a, yeah. it's, so this is what I did. I, I didn't. This is good. This is good. I realized this my second, my second year in uh, in college. So I was a biology major, so I knew if I took one class, it's four hours because because yeah. the lab. Because the lab. So yeah. I was like, well, cool. I'll get through these labs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I take three classes during the during the semester <coughs> that I play. So now I'm only taking three classes. Yeah. During the season, and then during the during the next season, during the off season, yeah. next semester, I would take nineteen. Right. 
Yeah. But you have to have 12 hours, just so you know, yeah. to so you be eligible. Hours. So yeah. that's what, every yeah. class yeah. is right. for 12 hours. Yeah, right. exactly. So so being a biology major, I was able to, to, to put yeah. together three courses. Right. And say, okay, I'm taking these yeah. three courses during yeah. the season, which is a very light workload. Lighter, right. Or lighter. Still, you're taking yeah. tough classes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah. They're, and doing well. As far as just like having to, to you know, you're studying yeah. biology, yeah. math, whatever. I could yeah. just study these three courses and yeah. keep them in the same wheelhouse. And some of them overlap. Like I was taking yeah. math with uh, Groves and taking yeah. biomechanics with uh, Mo, Coach Mo, yeah. Mo, and they were overlap. overlap. Yeah. So now I'm not even really, I'm just learning once. Yeah, right. you know what I mean? So that's kind of how I was doing. So I did that, and then the second semester I would take 19. But what I would do is I would I would put my put my classes together, whatever class I was interested in. So I'd fill it up, and i get 19. So I'd, I'd fill it up. And I would go to the class, and within a, a day or two of, of being there, I would say, okay, do I, am I interested in this or am I not? And if I wasn't interested, I withdrew. Right. If I was, I kept I stayed in it. And if I withdrew a class, I had a backup class that maybe yeah. I'd be interested in. Yeah. So when I first got here, I took I was I was actually enrolled in Spanish because mm-hmm. I needed a foreign language. Right. I was like, I got in there and he the first day he's speaking I was, and he's speaking. Yeah, he's right, like, right. I'm like, like, what are you doing? Get your book out. I gotta get my book out. And he's like, you know, I, I'm not trying to be funny, but he's <laughs> yeah. like, really? Oh, like he's that. rolling his tongue and I'm like, I can't roll my tongue like yeah. that. Like, so, <laughs> so I said, I can't take this course. Right. So I went in I went into I was, it was uh, Lower Army I don't know what it is now Coach Faulkner did that with a lot of courses I did, yeah. I did I, but not for the same reason just, yeah. just dropped yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Matt yeah. I can't take that <laughs> that's exactly right yeah, so, so you went to rap everything was Spanish to him yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta drop it yeah you read it so after, after I took the after the um, class was over I walked straight to Arlington yeah. I said I can't take the course right. but I need a foreign language yeah. I said what was that about Greek? Yeah, so I got in it. But the, the bad part was I was a day late. So I came in the next day and they do the same thing. But I'm kind of catching on to it. Mm. Like they're saying the, the, the alphabet. Dr. Like, Wayman? Is no, I was with Ruth Houston. Yeah. So oh, I, yeah. I'm it's catching on to it. I'm like, you know what? I, I kind of got to hang to this. Yeah. And so I stuck with it and I did, took group one and group two. I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I guess I will a little bit. Like the second semester, I had a 99. It wasn't a test where I missed a problem. I was like, you know, this is it. This is not going to finish it. Wow. And so, now, but, but that's because I was interested in the course. Right. And I made sure I took a course that I was interested in. I think so what's, times, but, what strikes me, Nick, is you're saying I put together a schedule. Like, yeah. n- nobody's it's telling you life. went and did it. Yeah. You decided if I like it, I'll drop it, I'll add it, I'll stick with it. Yeah. If something interests me. That's just really, really helpful for our for our students to hear. That's yeah. a good job. I had you in class. Yeah. And you do you remember me? Yeah, it was, it's a real <laughs> real easy class. No, I remember it was yeah. um in not what dude, what's the cross it? Mars? Yeah, Mars. Yeah. Right. And it was like health it was That's like, right. Uh, and we wellness. did a presentation. Wellness, yeah. We yeah. Did he can credit you for the yeah. size that he's put on. Uh, I know. <laughs> no, and, and you yeah. you sit in the front row and you were yeah. there every day. Yep. Yeah. And you're here you are, a great all American athlete. Yeah. But you know, winning, playing good, and playing the info, you were there every single day, yeah. front row. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, no, that's, that's the secret that's sauce that's that everybody's yeah. looking for. That's it. It's important, I think. And I talk to Coach Bell about it. Me and him talk about it all the time. It's like you get guys, and he tells me, "Hey, this guy's ineligible." Like guys that, because I watch, it, I watch the football games. You know, I'll watch them on Saturdays, and I'll go back. You'll watch the Greenville game. Yeah, and I got them on huddle, so I'll go back. Like I just did it the other day. I watch <laughs> spring practice. Like, yeah. okay, let's just do. Yeah. It's like I'm, I guess I'm on name drop. Uh, Dwayne uh, Gary, Gary oh, yeah, is my have, favorite yes. Greenville college football player of all time. Yeah, I watched so him fun. play against Morrison. Yeah, Minnesota Morris. Sorry, Minnesota Morris. And he had a pick. A pick yeah. He had a, a force. He picked up a fumble. And then he like ran the quarterback. And I said, yeah. that is the best linebacker play I've seen in Greenville. And I'm not making this up. Right. That's the best I've ever seen. You're going to get a text after this from some of your uh, friends that you played with. That you <laughs> I'm, that I'm that just going to be honest. Like, <laughs> if they go watch the tape because I got the number. I'm going to go I'm gonna go watch it with Coach Bill. I got the yeah. number of the plays. I've never seen a player play like that here. Yeah. He's very wow. much like you. and He's very humble. Yeah. And he is a great athlete. He's a great guy to have around. Yeah. No, I believe it. He's, yeah. And he's fun to watch. Yeah. And so when, when I see stuff like that, questions. I'm just like, I, I understand – not him. I'm not talking about him in particular. But I don't understand when guys say they're not eligible. It's like, look, if you truly want to play, yeah. and if you love playing the game, right. don't let anything get in the way of that. So yeah, if it's exactly. as simple as showing up to a class, sitting in the front row, just just because, and this sounds bad, if I'm having a problem, the teacher might be willing to help me. Absolutely. Just because I'm in the front, yeah. and, I'm, and my attendance is good. Yeah, totally. So yeah. if I do that, that's half the battle. I'm showing up, I'm sitting in the front row, I'm showing you I'm interested, I'm turning my homework in, whatever the case may be. I should be able to get somewhere between a C and a D. Absolutely. Just from doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't, just when they say that, I'm like, man, I don't understand. 
how you're eligible. Or you're just in a course that you're just not interested right. in. Or a major that you just can't handle, and now you got to go a different way. Right. Then there's a couple that you will have to do like that yeah. in your career. There's a couple, stats yeah. or whatever, in every major. I don't really want to be, but you got to do yeah, it to do what you want, really want to do. Yeah, exactly. So Chemistry. That, uh, it, people on the uh, video, you can't see. There's about a hundred, I don't know, ten, twenty people in the audience, yeah. and one of them keeps raising their hand with a yeah, question. Speaking so, for the crowd of over two hundred, some <laughs> Nick, I know that discipline comes at an early age. Mm -hmm. Or kindergarten teacher, or first grade teacher, your first grade teacher. I've heard a lot about her. What kind of impact did she have on you? And do you know her name? You know, so, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so was it, I mean, did you have to behave in that class with your mom? Yeah, no, that was a, so my mom, yeah, so my teacher, she's pregnant, she left on maternity leave, my mom subbed for her, so she was my teacher, and she didn't oh, answer all the questions, raised her hand, sure. and, yeah, so it was, it was definitely tough, I had to answer all the questions. I had my the mom last third thing grade, it's one, hard, yeah. I yeah, wanted to hard. say, your mother told me that she prayed for just one opportunity. Uh, for you to be recruited. Yeah. I mean, that was a God thing. I mean, all those other schools, look where you've gone. Yeah. Can you tell us about being recruited? I mean, you shared a little, but yeah. about her prayers and how that impacted your life. Well, I mean, I'm here now. I think just my parents, just their guidance and their love just throughout the entire process and even now has been so much to me. I think, just thinking of when we talk about hard work, just my father, like, um, he was putting himself through school at the time. Amber, my sister, and then myself. Wow. And he's working a full-time job. He's being a vocational pastor. So wow. he's a pastor. He's really a full-time pastor, but he doesn't get paid. So oh, yeah. he's a vocational okay. pastor, right? Yeah. So he was doing all those things, and he was still, you know, being a father, a mother, I mean, a father, a husband, um, and a pastor, and obviously a manager at his job. So he was doing all those things. And just seeing that day in and day out, that, that motivates me. Like, all right, that's the sauce. Like, it's just work. There's no substitute to it. Like, yeah. you got to do it. Your family got to eat. And you gotta go to work, all those things. So I think that's the biggest thing is just watching him work throughout the years and kind of uh, instilled it in me that I have to work too. Now he needs to stop. Now, he needs to slow down. <laughs> I love my father death. He, right? he left at the, one o'clock. The, the grandchild should help. Yeah, yeah he I said he left at he left at one o'clock this morning, drove through the night to be here. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's <laughs> yeah, what a great role model. Yeah. Nicholas, when you first were drafted, you were with Oakland, mm -hmm. right? Correct? Mm -hmm. And were they in Oakland? They were. It was in, in, Oakland, in yeah. the old stadium, mm -hmm. which is how 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 were the facilities? <laughs> Uh, kind of a dump. I mean, yeah, I, they're a dump. But you said I, just said I did. Yeah. Like the same as here. No portal. It's <laughs> as close to the same as here. But no portal. <laughs> right, right, right. But so then, you did you move with them to yeah, Vegas? To Vegas yeah. Boy, wow, that's mm -hmm. like a spaceship over there. No, it is. It's what it's were the facilities like there? I, everything you could think of. I guess yeah. beautiful, man. They, they obviously, anytime you talk about a, a, a billion dollar company, yeah, they right. don't have any expense to spare. Right. So they they do whatever they can for their players, but they had everything there. Indoor facility, right. as far as like um, the turf, yeah. So they had indoor turf, they had the weight room, the, the, the tubs, hot tub, cold tub, steam room, and whatever you needed, yeah. sauna, like whatever you needed, they had it. So then you go to Chicago, mm -hmm. and they're talking about building a new stadium. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I was like, man, I don't know who's going to be around here, because that's like, <laughs> right, right. I don't even think I'm going to start for another, what, three, four years? Right? Okay. Yeah, I'm not even going to be in the league when yeah. they do that. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, that's a lot but it's of just so man. iconic the cool. stadium on the lake with the with the turf field and everything, yeah. but they just you know, they gotta go bigger, I guess. Well, I mean, it's some of it is just you know you gotta you gotta renovate it a little bit. Like right, they, right. you know, it's an older stadium. They right. put, yeah. Yeah, from my understanding, they put a stadium inside of the older one. Yeah, right. Kind of did. So it's like yeah. you gotta at some point you gotta you gotta renovate it. So how are we gonna do it? I'm I'm not part of that. Which game. crowd was the best to play in front of? Or different? They're all good. Yeah, I knew. You Greenville was the best crowd. To play. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. And my, me and my uncle had this conversation. So, and I'm gonna get to it a little bit tomorrow. So I gotta, I gotta save the sauce. But yeah, yeah. I'll tell you why. Well, this story. won't, this won't show till later. So right. it doesn't matter. <laughs> one, one story. Um, one, two. But one, my uncle Terry and my uncle Eric, and then sometimes some other my other uncles that I can't think of exactly. You see, like Uncle Perry, stuff like that. I have a lot of uncles. They would come to the games in lawn chairs. And yeah. that's how they would watch the game. Yeah. Like I feel like yeah. that experience, yeah, uh, you just can't replace it. Like because you yeah. can't do it anywhere else. But you can get a lawn chair and sit right in front mm -hmm. of the thirty, right in front of the right. Room. You're right. So that's that was from row seats. Yeah. Absolutely. So, they, so I, you know, that's that, that to me is why it was one of my favorites. Your great grandma. Yeah. Very cool. That's that's cool. Anyway, my, yeah. So I was gonna say that one, but uh, yeah, my great my great grandmother would come to the games, and she was old. She was elderly. She was I don't I don't know, 
was definitely older. She was she was elderly, and sometimes she couldn't sit out in the elements like when it's cold. Or yeah, outside. yeah. So she would um, what they would do is they would sit in the car and they would park up as close as they could to the stadium. Yeah. And listen to the PA announcer and watch nice. the, yeah. the scoreboard. Yeah, same so she wanted to make sure she supported in whatever way possible. So that was definitely cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very what are your hobbies, Nick? What do you like to do outside of outside of watching film? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I had a couple. So I, I every off season I try to pick up a hobby. Yeah. This off season would be fatherhood. I learned how to swaddle and change diapers. I guess that's how I do it. But no, you know, one year I I was picked up cooking, so I you know learned how to cook and smoke. I pretty good smoker. Good like for I you. Wow. Um, wow. I taught myself piano one. Oh, I said I taught myself a little bit of the piano. Okay. Um, now I'm biking. Right. You know, I like to go out and golf. Now I'm not good at golfing, but I like to go out there and hack at some balls and put them in, you know, right. the ponds and stuff. Right. That's, <laughs> why, that's why you asked me for more golf balls. Yeah, exactly. you're gonna lose them. Okay. Yeah, we'll lose them. I need, I need more than one. That makes sense. Uh, one pack, rather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, those are some of my hobbies. Not, but I really probably mountain bike is probably my number one. I I went and bought a couple of bikes, and I can drive 15 minutes to a, to a mountain behind my house, and I go out there and bike by myself and just be out in mm-hmm. nature. And you get to a point where you can just go out and just see God's creation. It's the craziest thing to see, mm-hmm. like. Moving from Alabama to, to Illinois, yeah. to California, mm-hmm. to Arizona. Like, the things I saw in Arizona, I'm just, like, I'm amazed. Like, yeah. The canyons, yeah. the way the water looks, like, yeah. just to see what God has done to his earth. It's just amazing. Yeah. 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 Especially being a biology major. Just like, right. yeah. I don't know some like, I'm not a botanist. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> so I don't know all the plants and stuff, right. but just understanding kind of the elements of what's going on is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put the pressure on you now, hot seat. So we the degree is one semester away. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you got pulled away in the spring your senior year. Mm-hmm. Had to yeah. go. Had to do it. Yeah. We've set it up three times yeah. for you to get it done. I have. And then it's like meeting after meeting. I mean the the demands of the NFL is that's insane. Great. So we yeah. we've had to. I, I want you to look at the camera. Mm-hmm. Say I'm only gonna get my degree from Greenville University. Uh, I'm and, only and gonna that, get my degree from Greenville. That's it. That's it. I'm, I'm good. I got nothing else. I got nothing else. Not any hope. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll get you in the front row. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, what happens every so. You're right. Like I, I, I re-enroll. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm sitting yeah. and I sit down, and it's just not the same anymore. I sit there for an hour and I'm just like trying to do it. I'm like, man, I am. So I'm uninterested again. So Plus I, life. An academic <laughs> all conference when he was here. Oh, yeah. biology. And yeah. the GPA's through the roof. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like I know I can, I know I can finish it, but it's just like sitting, sitting back in the classroom. Yeah, right. yeah. I really got to get in a, ta- a topic that I'm, I'm passionate about. So I got my caps on. I was like, maybe I should talk about uh, concussion. I'm sitting right. there, I'm like, this is cool. Yeah, Don't get me yeah. wrong, but like, you ever think about the brain? Like, no, yeah, it's, to, it's too much. Yeah. I'm like, I don't understand oh, okay. it. I can't understand. Yeah. Like, I don't have enough yeah. background in the brain. Yeah. Damn, no, I don't know. that would be easy. But see, here's the thing: why I'm not going into anything other than biology. I took chemistry. Yeah. Chemistry was the toughest class right. I've ever taken. Right. It was the one class, like you said, I had to take. I couldn't drop it, yeah. and I got a B in it. And I was like, ah, yeah. this is it. I've like, accomplished something here. I'm going. Yeah, that makes so sense. That's it. That makes I'm biology, and maybe. No post right. post grad. It's kind of cool. You used it today in your in your talk. Yeah. Yeah. Really oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah. 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 First yeah. yeah. Thoughts, real thoughts about post NFL. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to my wife about this. Besides time. teaching piano <laughs> lessons. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. I, 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 I was telling like I did do a playbook with, uh, and me and Coach Bill are gonna go over today. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean I want to coach. Because I just feel like it's just so much time. You guys know. I mean, you put so much time into it. I don't, you know, I've, I've done it as a player. I don't yeah. want to do it as a, as a coach yeah. again. Makes right. sense. Um, but I don't know. Like, I, I've yeah. tried to get into, like, coding. Mm-hmm. I picked that up. I tried yeah. to pick it up. I yeah. sat in, like, one course, and I was like, man. Yeah. I mean, this is interesting, but, like, some of the stuff, I don't really, right. I don't have a background in this to understand it. And then maybe, like, going into some the business. Like, you might I consider broadcasting, too. I mean, yeah. you really yeah. you do yeah. have now you that. See, but I don't want to be in front of the camera. I don't yeah. want to be in front of the camera. I don't really want to talk. He, I do he's this. the most extroverted introvert okay. you'll ever meet. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I do it because uh. you're asking, but I, 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 but you I have, have insights to the game that other people wouldn't have. Yeah, that's no, true. I would. I would definitely enjoy yeah. analyzing the game, but yeah. as far as being in front of the TV, I don't know. I mean, right. camera. Okay. I don't you know. could. You could do radio. He does radio. He's a voice yeah. of the people. I know. He's a voice of the fans. I heard you talking about the voice of the fans. Well, he's not missing an episode of just the show. I mean, he he watches them all. They're all just on replay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, Nick. When you spoke today, uh, 
you you've got to do something with teaching the Bible. Yeah. You you make it simple, uh, interesting, but you know what you do is you use the Word of God. Yeah. And there's a there's a real gap there of people in the pulpit not really using the Word of God. Yeah. That's kind of out there in the Christian community, and you just like brought it home, and it was and you did it like fairly quickly. I mean, you're gifted. Yeah. I, I don't. I mean. You're good at preparing. You're a good public speaker, but I think God's given you some some gifts in that area on how to teach the Word of God. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, it's funny you said. Well, not funny. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Honestly. And I think something that I take from is my father, yeah. the pastor. And I sit yeah. under him. Yeah, and, absolutely. And something that he does, and like you talked about, yeah. it comes right from the scriptures. So yeah. Like he'll pick a scripture. Yep. And his points are like, yep, they're right there. Yep. And I kind of, man, God, I kind of use that yeah. template a little bit, and then I also use Pastor Hawkins' college yeah. proctor outline. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I'm sitting, I'm sitting under him and kind of learning how the proctor outline yeah. goes, and I watch his sermons um, before, I, like on, on Saturdays, because we don't get to go to church, right? And so you know, during the season, so I yeah. watch his sermons on Saturdays, and just kind of seeing how he did the outline and learning under him, yeah. it's kind of helped me when it comes to preparing the sermon. Now, that, granted, I've only that's my first sermon I've done at public. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. that was really I've, good. I've only That's, I didn't know that. I've only done a sermon in like class setting, like you know, wow. ten people, yeah. if that. Um, but that was my first sermon. Yeah. Yeah. I think God's given you some gifts. Yeah. You gotta pay attention to and pray about. Yeah. It. yeah, I mean, you're all right at football, but you're really yeah. good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to wrap it up because we're already probably 20 minutes past when, like, yeah, cute yeah. people can stand to watch stuff, you know, <laughs> so it's good. But thank you for being on the show, uh, and we're excited for the weekend, and what a great person for us to have as our first Legacy Weekend. Uh, you represent us well, so we appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Excellent.